Hello guys, uh, today we're going to talk about another solver and uh, this is um, some kind of, um, this is another IK solver but rather than the one that we saw um, previously which was solving among three transforms, three bones and usually the solver is used to create a, an arm or a leg or a limb so one, one, two three points. This is a, a, a standard IK to get this kind of behavior. There will be an effector here and moving the effector will um, compute the rotation of, of these of these bones. Today instead we're going to look at something called basic um, fabric IK which is a similar idea but rather than only using three joints and use an arbitrary number of chain as long as they are you know it's a close hierarchy of transforms and uh, this is the starting position that I'm going to export. Let's jump into Unreal. So, uh, as usual, let's just quickly go through the setup event. I have my variable partial name. I keep doing that in every video. I'm sorry. Um, it's called Fabric IK. If I go into the rig hierarchy, I have uh, a bunch of nodes are uh, uh, fabric IK bones so this list here is um, all these joints here and I'm storing that in a variable so I can call it back whenever I want without having too many lines in the graph what I do is basically I procedurally place this control and this control actually this I don't because it's already at real origin it, it's already where I want it but you could um, this is taking this thing here is taking the last bone and is saying set the control offset of this guy at the last bone into an initial position. So these one, two bones are in initial position. So ignore the arrow for now. Uh, in today's video we, we are going to look at, as I said, in the basic Fabric IK, but I'm using this example also to start introducing a um, couple of more nodes and one is called slide and the other one is a big one and to me it's one of the main differences that comes from a DCC application. Remember when I'm at the beginning I was talking about control rig being an execution stack. One of the biggest things that you can do in control rig is branch portion of the graph. And, and not just it, the branch, yes, it's an if statement, meaning that if, this, if the condition is true, do this. If the condition is false, do, do, do the other thing instead. But basically, with, that, with this mechanism, is, it means that you can run code or logic that you have embedded in the graph at runtime. And doing this in a standard DCC application requires to write a tool around it. Instead, here you're embedding the scripted functionality within the graph and this is this is really really powerful so we, we're going to discuss about that in a minute but I just want to say that you know we're going to see that the fabric IK there is not much to say but this allows me to introduce these other two things so um, let's start with the not with the setup event let's start with the forward solve in this forward solve um, I am saying give me the, con the, the root and with this root attach it to the first bone okay so yeah I, I hard coded here actually doesn't matter right now but it, I, it's hard coded and then give me all the bones that I have stored here and run a fabric IK based on the end effector, which happens to be this guy. Well, the behavior that you get is this one. So you can see that the, the solver is outputting rotation for each of these bones, and not just two. And this is the kind of behavior that you get. Now, the basic fabric IK um, has a slightly different uh, amount of options and probably that's why they call it basic um, so it's simply performing rotations around along um, you know based based on, on on the input bone the end bone and this transform here and the effector 
you don't you cannot specify here a pole vector for example and you you don't have options to um to have stretch so which is something that you have instead in the in the in the basic uh, ik um which is fine it, it means that you have to implement this for stretchiness you you may have to implement it yourself uh this solver is pretty cool you can do a lot of stuff with it and it, it behaves quite well and it seems really fast now let's start, try to complicate things a little bit what you can do with this well you can do you know there are examples there is a really cool example of a scorpion uh, online where where um, the, the scorpion tail was rigged with the solver on top of having all sorts of dynamics on it um, but you can do many many things let's try to complicate things a little bit so let's ignore this node for a minute and let's ignore this for a minute this portion of the graph for a minute so in here um, actually let me take this off and let me grab this one this graph here this portion of the graph here that does that is exactly up is exactly this one is these these nodes here you can see that it's like one two four five it's one two three four five these and then i added another node that is called slide chain afterwards slide chain node says slide an existing chain along itself with control over extrapolation this uh, it's something that if you were to do the effect that we're going to see in a minute in here in a dcc application this will take a lot a lot of a lot of nodes to compute uh, or you have to write custom c++ node so this slide chain take a chain and this is my chain and then it, it takes a slight amount all right and let's detach this for a minute so let's put a forward solve here let's take this guy attach it move it here connect it so i have my behavior and then i can set i can set the slide amount to be 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 up to zero up to one sorry up one the chain it's collapsed onto its own. <coughs> so <coughs> what I can do th with this? Well, I added this control that I asked you to ignore before. This control is a control that is meant to go to stay at zero and nothing happens. And then it, and it's meant to go down. I haven't set any limit. I don't care for now. But what I'm doing is that I'm taking the z-axis of this control and remapping it. And I'm saying when it when the control is at zero, output zero when a control uh, uh, when the control it's a minus 20 output one and also I'm clamping it I oh I never want to go outside these boundaries let's see what happens when I plug this um, this value here compile I get this behavior here let, let me pose the chain and then I'm gonna start sliding down and this is the behavior that you get it's it basically it's collapsing the chain along the the final state of the of, of the local translation and this is this is quite quite nice so we saw this one we saw the fabric ik we saw the slide chain let's try to see what happens out of curiosity and this is an exercise I, I keep doing over and over again just to understand how things are working I am in here swapping the two the two behaviors so if I if I let's let's clean up these things a little bit if I say that this portion of the grass is fabric IK and this is like performing instead the chain the, the slide chain slide I want to see what happens when I swap these two around, which happens to be the graph underneath. So this is my fabric IK. <coughs> and this is my slide. Okay, so this, this one here is this one. 
this one here, so this one. The order of operation is inverted. So let's see what happens when I do that. I can move these things around. But let's see what happens when I slide the chain. So remember, I'm sliding first and computing the fabric I chain afterwards. So the chain gets pulled from the origin because the sliding is computed before it's passing the data to the fabric IK. So this kind of behavior can you know, be really useful for a certain type of effect. Or let's just see how it was before. Uh, let's connect the previous, the previous thing. I move these things around. I the the chain in this case is taking the slide is taking the final computation of the fabric and is sliding the chain after that computation is done. So the behavior that you get is that this this the chain slides along the final position of what the fabric IK has computed. Cool. Now in a perfect world you would pick this one or the other, but more than often you are dealing with animation and animation says well I want both I need both both behaviors because that's what I do and I, I need both and then in the end it's gonna, they're gonna use only one but that's that's a different different type of topic I'm joking by the way um, so anyway what what happens if you want to have both both behaviors and the user want to, to to toggle which behavior they prefer well, this is where the true power of control rigs start to come into play. So you can you can set an if statement, and you can say in the in this case it's called branch. You can start branching the graph, and you can drive how, which portion of the graph you want to execute by by specifying a specific condition. So let's say that when the condition is true this portion of the graph gets executed and when the condition is false this portion of the graph gets executed and let's see right now the condition is set to false and it means that this portion of the graph gets executed which means if everything has worked this chain should not ro uh, slide along its, its, its this curve but rather it should get shorter and shorter, like it's doing now. Let's make it like that. Yeah, it's getting shorter and shorter. Now, what happens if I put the execution to be true? You can see that the chain now is revolving around the other behavior. So, it's if I if I let's reset everything, all the controls. If I set true it goes around control G to reset this control back to zero if I set false it goes back there nothing stops you now to say I want a variable called sliding behavior you set this variable to boolean you expose this, this variable so it's it's available to the user you get it and then you set it here now by default it's off which means this should be like that and when I set this on it should go the other way so again this is something that I uh, we, we touch upon the fabric IK fabric IK it's a specific type of solver that uh, solves around you know points and but it takes it, it outputs multiple rotations that you can drive joints with but then we added another node and I added this node just to show you the node because I think it's a pretty cool node but also to have a behavior that we can switch now this this branching it's such a powerful mechanism because with this we will see when we start you know having a proper real example and um, with the branching you can basically execute portion of the code at the flick of a, of a toggle uh, of, a, of a boolean value and this allows you to do something that it usually is very complicated to achieve, such as you know IKFK matching, when you want to switch from an IK arm to an FK arm, or even something more complicated. So this is the true difference. Um, having this kind of switch 
and being able to perform portion of the graph on demand is one to me it's today it's one of the most powerful thing control rig gives you um, in a normal DCC application you either have to complicate the rig massively you can see this is a very simple graph you can have to you, you in a standard DCC application you you have to complicate the rig a lot in order to enable some sort of blending between two different chains so you can have a final chain that blends between two chains so the user can blend it that's fine it's totally doable don't get me wrong it's just the amount of of things you have to maintain in the graph it's vastly superior like the number of nodes can easily and also having looping it allows you to not uh, because if, if not having looping and branching it means that this graph uh, in a normal DCC application would not scale linearly there is an exponential complexity the more you have joints the more you have controls the the graph they end up with gets exponentially more complicated which is one other reason why looping and branching um, allows you to have um, such a to get such a nice behavior in a small graph. I hope I'm making sense. Thank you.